My last video on the making of the four barrel throttle bodies seems to have aroused a, a bit of interest in the gravity die casting process. So I thought I'd do a, a bit of a video to show some of the gravity die work I've done over the years. Um, and also to impress upon people that the sort of machine I use to do the four barrel is not really necessary, that there are for a lot of work anyway, much simpler ways of doing things. Now this pile of miscellaneous here on the bench uh, is simply some of the examples of the sort of stuff I've done over the years. So let's have a look at some of this stuff, from the simplest to the more complex. This is a gravity die casting mould of it at, at the simplest level of the process. It's simply a mould to make a diver's lead weight and I've got a lot of these that I use to weight my moulds down. Now normally when doing a job like this I would spray the die uh, or the mould with a little die spray but if you don't have a little die spray what you can do is what I've done here with this one I've simply smoked it over a gas flame. I've only used an LPG gas flame it's probably better to use acetylene if you've got it but if you haven't got it you haven't got it. Die coats are essential to get a good casting. They give a slightly rough sand like surface. The metal flows in on the top of this roughness leaving minute passages through which air can escape. The coat is insulating, usually, and this allows the metal to flow further. Typically the coats are made from a refractory like talc, fine sand or alumina and a binder like sodium silicate. A thin water mix of the coat is sprayed onto the hot 200 degrees C plus dye. It flash dries leaving a thin 0.1 to 0.2 millimeter coat on the dye. Lubricating coats are based on graphite or boron nitride are also used. A quick look at a dye being sprayed. The dye has been heated by torches. It's now well over 200 degrees C. It's quickly scrubbed down on the surface to be sprayed with it with a bit of steel wool. Uh, and uh, little areas uh, tickled up with a wire brush just to get everything clean and make certain the spray will stick properly. One area there is, is shielded where I don't want any spray with that little round tube and then using a, an ordinary uh, paint spray touch-up gun when we get it working right the dye is lightly and evenly coated with the spray. You can see it actually flash drying off. This is just to shield some areas that I don't want any spray on. There are areas where the dye has to slide and they're actually covered with a lubricant. Now we'll clean any spray off any areas where we didn't want it, those lubricated areas again. And that's just about job done. That half of the dye is now sprayed. So we put it back on the gas torches to keep warm until we're ready to cast. So, all right, let's 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 see if we can make one here. Get some gloves on. Now, all, all of these moulds have been heated to well above the boiling point of water to make certain they're dry because heavy metals like lead spit very badly. So it pays to be very careful that things are dry. So here we have a little ladle of molten lead and it's just a simple matter of doing this. And we'll leave it about there till it goes solid and I'll go put a little bit of lead back on for another job. Now that's, uh, by the look of it, it's not actually pure lead. It seems to be showing a, a solidification pattern of other things. Well, when it's done, you simply pick it up, whack it on the bench, and with luck, uh, it'll come out. And there we go. One new shiny diver's weight. That's the simplest form of the process, but it's still quite handy because I can go on and I can make these damn things all day if I wish to. Put that one out of the way now, and we'll get the next one. This one's slightly more complicated. A two-piece die. It simply makes a lead plate that was designed to join batteries together in a setup to uh, go with solar power. Um, 
I've drilled it for dowel pins, but I, you don't really need them with this because this side of the die is, well, more or less flat. Although I have got little dimples for where you drill through, and it would be nice if they lined up, uh, which you could use dowels to do, of course. But basically, if we line the, the die up, it probably won't be too bad anyway. Down here. Amazing how awkward things are to do when you've got gloves on your hands. That doesn't look too bad. Looks fairly well lined up. Now we'll see whether we've got some uh, molten lead ready down there. Okay, some more lead. And we'll just gently tip it in, maybe a bit quicker than that, but we'll be right, I hope. And now get rid of the rest into the little ingot mould here, which of course has also been nicely preheated. It's pretty solid to me. I don't know what we're going to get here. Quite often the first one isn't much good. Uh, this die had been sprayed some time ago and I've just left the old spray on it. Oh yeah, not too bad I guess. Can we get it out? That's the next question. Here we come. Hmm. That's not too bad. That'd do for what it has to do. I have been asked the question, why bother the gravity die cast? Well, here's a, here's a possible case. Let's say you've made four or five of these for a, for a friend. They're uh, uh, an aileron flap or something for a model aircraft, I believe, a crank to make them work. And he says, Butte, they're good, they do the job nicely, but look, I've got this mate, and he wants hundreds of them. What do you do? Well, it's a small job. It's a very small job, so you can do this. You can put 14 of them on a plate, and you can, in fact, sand cast them. Simple little plate. And it works quite well. You don't get all 14 usually. Some of them will misrun at the ends, but you can rely on 12. So you can produce them reasonably quickly. Or another similar job like this too, where I've got 12 little castings on a plate. Now that's fine if the castings are small. But what happens... What do you do when the castings get bigger? Do you tell your customer, no, 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 it'd take me forever to make them in sand. Uh, I'm not interested. And do you lose the opportunity? Up to you. Now, here is another job. I used to do this one in sand. And uh, it's actually a runway light base. It's this runway light base. It has a, a thread cast in. I was making maybe 17 a day, uh, and it was a pretty long, hard slog of a day, but they started to want them in 100 lots, and I thought, that's that's a bit rude, that's a bit grim, a lot of work. So I cut this, this die, um, and again, very simple. There is no machine other than what you see here. This is only just mild steel bar. It's got enough spring in it to hold the die closed. Quick thing just to hold it closed. Uh, and no problem at all, the die just pulls out against the two stops. There's a sand core that goes in, which, you, which I normally paint and treat in various ways first. That simply goes in there, close the die, lock it, pour the metal in, wait till it goes solid, take it out, throw it in a bucket of water. There is actually a full video on the making of this part and I will leave a link to it and to any other videos that apply as we go through in the description down below. Very simple, very easy to do, all turned out on a lathe, and a, a cheap, nasty Indian lathe at that. Any mug can do it. And this, it probably takes me a day to make 120, 130 of these, and I can easy make 130 of those in the next day. All right. An added bonus here is that the one day running the gravity die is a lot easier than any of the seven days making the sand castings. Let's have a quick look at this die being poured. The hot die is opened up uh, and a shell core is inserted to make the inside of the casting. 
any loose material is blown off the core. It's put in the die. Die closed. Uh, no, blow some more loose stuff out. Close the die properly. Swing the spring clips in place. Pour the casting. And now we just have to wait for it to go solid. I'm putting on a rubber glove here and you'll see why I need the rubber glove shortly. I'm trying to hurry it up going solid here, uh, trying to take some of the heat out of the feeder on it with the pair of tongs. It also leaves a little um, dimple in the top of the feeder and you'll see why that's handy in a minute too. Casting's now gone solid. Open the die, gently, carefully. Remove the casting. And drop it in uh, some cold water. This helps loosen the core. The core is loaded for the next casting. And then when the die is appropriately closed, that casting is poured. All the while our first casting is cooling down in the bucket of water. That's the next one poured, we can now attend to the first one. After pouring the next casting, the first one is pulled out of the water. Now here's why the rubber glove. Uh, I need something waterproof here, and the rattle gun I'm using here is the best way to remove the core. A quick swizzle around in the water again, and presto, one lovely clean casting, thread and all. Here, I'm really getting back into ancient history. Very ancient history for me. A friend got some old fire hose, plastic fire hose, and we needed some couplings to join it together. So I made these brass dies. Yes, they're brass or bronze of some sort. I've sand cast them myself and then machined them. And if we can get the dies open, which is always strangely a problem. Okay, now I don't have the machine these held in here in front of me. It's out the back, stored away, and it's so damn heavy I'm not dragging it out. But I do have a photograph of it, which I'll, I'll put in here now as a still. I made this machine about 1975, but it proved to be a bit heavy and clumsy. I've never used it much. And it actually shows this very die here uh, mounted in it. That might be a little hard to see. One thing I've found, incidentally, is that diagonal dowels like this are always a bit prone to locking up. I'm not too sure why that is. Okay, so there we can see the two halves of the die. Here's the part itself, comes out of here, gating down here. The part was actually only as thick as this section here. It's only, oh, it's about an eighth of an inch, I think. And we cast it around a sand core, which we rammed up in something like this. Sprayed it uh, with a bit of thin down silver frost paint, as that seems to help with some alloys. And then when that's in the machine, simply very carefully sat the green sand core on here, closed the die and poured the metal in. It worked quite well. Uh, we made quite a few of those. Never used any of them, but we made them all. But as you can see, this, this die effectively, the... The, the uh, cavity in the sand mould that I cast the die in has actually been largely hacked out by hand, just very roughly. And it worked quite well. Now, we also needed a clamp, and here's one of them, to go around the hose pipe later uh, to hold the fire hose onto the aluminium coupling we just made. It gets drilled through there for a bolt and then it gets slit down there so it can clamp by there. And this die is a little bit more complicated, it fits the same machine, but it, it is, as I say, slightly more complicated in that it has a core. Oh, right, got it. 
That side's just flat apart from a little bit of the gating. Actually, that way. But this side has a withdrawing uh, core piece in order to make the uh, centre of the die. I did find out fairly early that brass doesn't work well on a core piece like this. It, it rapidly attacks the brass, so I've had to sleeve that with a bit of steel. They worked quite well too and fitted the same machine uh, and we made a few hundred of these pretty quickly as well. They were made out of melted down old lawnmower bases and this is a classic case of being careful what you melt down because I picked the wrong material. And remember that this was something that was supposed to lie on the ground forever and stay in one piece. There's one that's just been somewhere wet. Because I chose the wrong alloy, an alloy containing quite a lot of copper by the look of it, it's just corroded. It's terrible. It, it wouldn't have lasted at all well uh, out in the bush where it was meant to go. Anyway, we'll get rid of this lot and then we'll then move on to the next least complicated parts we made. At the next level of complexity of dies, I was given two dies, of which this is one, to make this thing. It's a uh, light clamp for theatres. The light hangs from here and this clamps around some sort of bar up in the ceiling and locks into place. Unfortunately, the two blokes who bought me these dies had made them themselves and they had absolutely no idea uh, about di uh, gravity die casting or how to make dies or whatever. They're brilliant machinists, but they know nothing about casting. Unfortunately, they rather thought they did, but they couldn't get the dies to work properly. So I got stuck with them. Anyway, here they are, uh, and the little casting actually comes out of them in there. I hope you can sort of see it, kind of. Uh, and it's simply a matter of closing the die up, ladling the metal in here, and when it's gone solid, when it's gone solid, opening the die, and there are a couple of ejector pins here that we just give a little tap to like that. Take the casting out with a pair of tongs, pull the ejector pins back and close the die again. Now, note the, the opening and closing mechanism. It's quite simple. Any, any mug and his dog can make that. It's just an over centre mechanism with a stop here to, that it opens against. And it just flicks a little over the centre so that it's locked in position, but it's quite tight and it'll hold quite well. And you can adjust it by nuts up here um, to make it as tight or loose as needed. Very simple little machine that it all sits in, just made out of scrap. Uh, and it works quite well. I made, I made rather a lot of those over the years, um, despite the fact that the dies were a bit ordinary. <laughs> now, let's have a look at its mate over here. Again, the same over centre type of mechanism here and they do work well you need something to guide the die a bit but you know and, and the die has a couple of little dowel pins uh, although you, you probably can't see them from that angle I might shift the camera and give you another angle in a minute this die is a little more complicated and I did have some fun getting it to work I can tell you because it was <laughs> rather badly done so there's a core piece goes in there to form the main hole here and the casting actually comes out ah, from there uh, so this core forms the hole in the middle down there and this little core here forms the little slot over on this side here. So close the die almost, not quite. Slip that core into place, close it a little more. Slip this one into place, pull the ejector pins back, ladle the metal in here. Uh, wait a short time and I'll just move around the other side so I can do this properly. Perhaps 20 or so seconds and then with a pinch bar 
flick that little core out, set it up there to keep warm, and then maybe a few seconds later, get this lever in here and flick that core out, which can be quite hard to get out of by that. And again, just sit it on the bench somewhere. Then simply open the die and then flick this lever and it's got a couple of ejector pins on it that push the casting out. And almost closed, pull the pins back, slip that in place, slip that one in place and we're ready to go again. Quite simple, again, just made out of a bit of old junk and rubbish lying around. And what I used to do with the, this one and its mate we just saw a few seconds ago, I'd bolt them down to a couple of bits of wood on a big square bench uh, and run them both together, and it all worked quite well. This is the uh, next most complicated, uh, or least simple, whichever way you like to look at it, uh, little gravity die machine that I, can that I use. It... It's still based on the over centre mechanism here with a with a stop down the bottom so that, that it stops it just over the centre so it locks and holds the die closed quite nicely. Adjustable here as usual. Um, this little die simply makes this part. It's a nut and it comes out of the die basically like this. That's, that's the position it sits in in the die. We can get it out, and I'll just take this out to show you. This is the core that forms the uh, the hole in the middle of the die, uh, middle of the casting. Sorry. And in operation, it's simply locked there. An overcent, another overcenter clamp here just holds the core in position. The metal is poured in there after a, about 20 seconds. This slide hammer is operated to pull the core back uh, and perhaps another 20 seconds later the die is opened and the casting is just sort of tapped out and um, you get about, all up about one a minute I guess with this. With this machine I've got a little bit more sophisticated, I've put cheap bearings, these are unground bearings, the sort of things they use on drawers and that sort of stuff, um, just to guide it a bit on the edge of some... Uh, angle iron here and that seems to help quite well it actually works quite nicely this die uh, and I've made oh I must have made thousands of these little nuts I guess maybe hundreds I don't know quite a lot over the years anyway now here are a couple of little castings done in uh, one of the simpler machines uh, some considerable time ago that's a motor end cap and uh, it's a little more complicated um, but and it didn't work all that well it's a bit dull in the middle and dull in a few other areas I would have liked to have produced a better casting than that but it did do the job and this one was a uh, bronze uh, uh, part for a um, some sort of uh, door opening mechanism it was an absolute disaster. I mean, it's not a bad looking little casting, but my furnace isn't well enough shielded to allow you to stand close to it all day and ladle bronze. You get very hot very quickly, and I just about passed out after about an hour, and I had to scrap the job.